welcome back to pathology. Let's go through pediatric diseases. Okay, so starting from the beginning, symmetrical defects will come from genes. Asymmetrical defects are coming from the environment, so this can be the placental abnormalities, um, decreased amount of uh, of amniotic fluid, which can which results in physical or mechanical compression. Malformation are the intrinsic errors of morphogenesis. So this is coming from the genes. So it's going to be a symmetrical defect. Disruption is going to be an extrinsic um, occurrence. It's going to be the secondary destruction of a normal body region. So this is not heritable. It's due to um, a defect from the environment. Deformation is going to be extrinsic and it's going to result from the compression of the fetus. So there's no actual destruction, there's just going to be a deformation of a normal, uh, well, okay, so technically it's a normally developing, let's say limb, like all of this signaling is correct, but it's due to the outside factors that it's being deformed. Cascades is, is going to be, oh, sorry, a sequence is a cascade, triggered by one initiating aberration, whether it be a genetic abnormality or an environmental insult. A syndrome is going to be a constellation of anomalies that are related, but you can't explain it using one cause because it could be like environmental plus genetic. Okay, so the maternal risk. The big three that mothers cannot use is alcohol, tobacco, and cocaine. This will result in uh, very severe uh, insults to development. Other insults would be medications such as thalidomide, uh, tretinoin, and lithium. So this is anti-nausea. Um, this is uh, skin care. So um, anybody who, on, who is on Accutane should not be on Accutane even trying to become pregnant. Uh, lithium is used for bipolar disorder. So obesity and diabetic, uh, diabetic mothers who take uh, insulin are um, at risk for having a child that will develop type 1 diabetes, um, along with the fact that insulin inhibits cortisol. And cortisol, the stress hormone, stimulates surfactant production. Um, other risks are preeclampsia and eclampsia. Eclampsia is the, uh, the, the truly... Uh, severe risk of death. So cleft lip and palate occur when the mother is using uh, anticonvulsants, so uh, medication for seizures, and alcohol abuse. Uh, there's going to be a vitamin B complex deficiency and it's common in trisomy 13 and van der Voorde syndrome. So there's the cleft palate, as you can see here. The lip is pretty common. Lip is not too bad because the lip is a pretty, uh, pretty easy uh, procedure. Um, a plastic surgeon can sew this up real fast. The cleft palate is a little bit harder. So the van der Voorde syndrome is when there are like these dips in the bottom lip where the lips have not like fully formed yet and there's going to be syndactyly so the phalanges are fused so the necrotized enterocolitis occurs about two to three days after birth and mainly uh, premature infants the intraventricular and germinal matrix hemorrhage will cause the coagulative necrosis. So the increased platelet activating factors will be found in serum and the breakdown of the mucosal barrier is going to allow the translaminal migration of the bacteria and that is going to worsen the necrosis because then like you know um, the immune system kicks in and starts killing the bacteria but also uh, damaging the germinal matrix and the surrounding tissue uh, it's presented as poor feeding, bile stained vomit, bloody diarrhea, and in the later cases, it's going to be uh, respiratory distress with acidosis. And of course, there's a risk of sepsis thanks to the translaminal migration. 
So in a normal um, child, here's the bowels, here's the stomach, look at all this nice and contained. But in this case, uh, the bowels have like completely just like even um, not obstructed but obscured the the stomach itself. It's like going everywhere and look how large they are. Highland membrane disease is going to be due to premature delivery, excessive sedation of the mother, so there's no cortisol, a fetal head injury during the delivery, aspiration, and intrauterine hypoxia. The risks, males, maternal diabetes, a C-section gone wrong, no surfactant is made uh, thanks to immaturity or insulin usage, and the pathology is going to be actylexis, so the collapse of the alveoli, and it's going to be honeycombing. As the fibrosis sets in, um, there's going to be hypoxemia and carbon dioxide retention because now there's not going to be any like uh, exchange. Uh, there's not going to be any oxygen carbon dioxide exchange. Um, in the in the uh, cadaver is found that the lungs is going to be a honeycomb. Uh, you can also see it um, in an MRI and in a uh, x-ray it, it's going to appear as ground glass. Anastarka is going to be caused by the right heart failure thanks to the hypoxemia. Um, core pulmonality is going to result so it's the problems with the lung causing the right heart failure. We treat it by giving the mother corticosteroids and oxytocin, and you give the baby surfactant so the lungs can mature. So here in a normal, healthy um, lung, uh, the septa is pretty uh, thin, and the cells, there's nothing in the air cells, it's clear in this, um, in this image in particular, the septa is very thick and the air cell is tiny. And here, there has been like just destruction of the air cells itself, but like it's, it's really this right here. So everything's too thick and it's starting to fill up. Okay, so perinatal infections occur when there's a transcervical infection. So it can occur thanks to in inhalation infected amniotic fluid um, passing through the infected vagina. So it's usually a bacterial infection. So think gonorrhea. Uh, think uh, chlamydia, transplant, plan ten, oh, sorry, transplacental infection is mostly parasites and viruses thanks to the chorionic villi. So um, the one that you need to be worried about is uh, hepatitis and HIV. Uh, the torch group of infections here, uh, fever, encephalitis, hepatosplenomegaly, pneumitis, <clears throat> myocarditis, Hemolytic anemia is going to be the, the conditions that are very dangerous for the child. Hydrops fatalis is going to be mostly caused by a person with Turner syndrome, RH incompatibility, and alpha thalassemia. So to treat the RH incompatibility, you give the mother Rogam before and after birth, and uh, it's going to result in, well, not the Rogam, but untreated it's going to these conditions are going to result in hepatosplenomegaly and hemolytic anemia there's going to be generalized edema and that is called anasarca non-immune high drops is going to be due to the cardiovascular defects turner syndrome again trisomies 21 and 18 and the parvovirus b19 so it's going to result with the cystic hygromas. Um, these, this is it. Uh, it's also known as the slap cheek disease. So some children aren't born with a cystic hygroma, but they come out with like very very red cheeks. Uh, there's going to be anemia, hepatosplenomegaly, jaundice, neurologic injury, and they're all uh, characterized by this hepcidin accumulation. Remember, hepcidin is going to be like res remnants of iron uh, accumulated in macrophages. So these are also the heart failure cells. So you see that, you know there's something wrong with the heart. Heart is failing somehow. 
Pernicterus is going to be neonate jaundice, plano hepatomegaly, thanks to the unconjugated bilirubin. It can deposit anywhere in the body, but it's most dangerous to deposit it in the brain because they are not uh, water soluble. Uh, the liver needs to make more gluconeric acid transferase. And when the buildup is in the brain, it's not soluble, it's not removable. This is going to result in uh, severe mental retardation or death. Okay, so phenylketonuria is going to be an um, autosomal recessive deficiency of phenylalanine hydroxylase. So without that, it's not going to convert into tyrosine, and tyrosine isn't going to make, more importantly, the catecholamines. So there's no neurotransmitter, there's no um, hormones, uh, such as thyroxin, and even more importantly, there's no melanin being produced. Melanin can be made into like serotonin, which can be made into other, like, other intermediates as well. So the intermediates are going to be excreted in sweat, so the child is going to have a mousy or musty odor. Uh, it's severe mental retardation because of the lack of the neurotransmitters. And in galactosemia, there's going to be an autosomal recessive deficiency of galactose 1-phosphate uh, uridyl transferase. And right here, so uh, galactose 1-P can't be transferred to UDP galactose, and from there it can't be made into the glycogen conjugates. So the galactose 1-phosphate is going to be accumulating in the tissue, and it accumulates in the liver, in the eyes, and in the central nervous system. So these children, they cannot drink breast milk. They have to f um, be supplemented. Cystic fibrosis is going to be a de deletion of phenylalanine gene at position 508 on the chromosome number 7. This is going to uh, affect the cystic fibrosis transport receptor. There's going to be a loss or reduced chloride secretion in respiratory and intestinal lumen. So there's going to be... Um, <clears throat> there's not going to be water following the secretion, so the secretion is going to be very low in like water content. It's going to be very thick and mucousy. There's an abnormal transport of uh, hydrogen or hydrogen. Oh, sorry, bicarbonate, and it's going to result in once again the exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, core pulmonale, infertility because the sp uh, sperm isn't going to be able to move through the uh, tracts. Uh, the ducts very well and right heart hypertrophy there's going to be death from opportunistic infections uh, sudden infant death syndrome uh, is the ideology is unknown but we know the risk is uh, in males smoking during your pregnancy premature delivery and more importantly letting your child sleep on their side and stomachs so you have to remember to put them on their back so it's back to sleep Congenital hemangiomas are not too bad. They're the most common tumors of uh, infancy. They go away. They're about, uh, they're really red, port wine colors, and they're benign. Von Hippolandau is uh, angiomatosis or hemangioblastoma. It can also be pheochromocytoma, a renal cell uh, carcinoma. So it can result in all of these. So it's not a good disease at all. Uh, it manifests itself with caffeolay spots. Sturge Weber syndrome is going to be encephalotrigeminal angiomatosis. Um, what does that mean? There are too many capillaries in the meninges in the areas of the face innervated by the trigeminal nerve. And it manifests itself as only one half of the body. Um, <clears throat> it affects V1 of the trigeminal nerve, so it's going to affect the visual center. Um, there's going to be seizures, visual and mental deficiency, hemiplasia on the contralateral side, and as you can see here, there's going to be capillaries, look how dilated they are, not good. Okay, so small round blue cell tumors are mostly neuroblastomas, which come from the adrenal gland medulla, and those form rosettes, so just like circular rosettes. Uh, retinoblastoma is going to form the Flexner-Wintersteiner rosette, 
in the eye. So there's going to be a central lumen with short cytoplasmic uh, processes poking out. Um, the cat's eye reflex is due to the like the blastoma in the retina. It's going to destroy the retina, and then when you take a picture, it's the eye is going to flash just like a cat. So in a normal human, there's a red eye because there are, is vessels in the back of the eye and supplying the retina. When the retina is destroyed, there's nothing left back there. It's completely um, white, so it's fibrosed, and it just reflects light. The most common small round blue cell tumor is going to be osteoblastoma, uh, lymphoma, uh, small lung cell tumors. And, uh, other common ones are Ewing sarcoma and rhabdomyosarcoma which is Wilms tumor. Oh, sorry. So a neuroblastoma is going to be uh, a, is going to be a tumor of the neurons, particularly the um, myelin. It's going to present with that large abdominal masses, a fever, weight loss. There's going to be bowel and bladder dysfunction, ecchymosis, uh, cutaneous and met metastasis, unfortunately, so it's going to spread through the skin, and it's unfortunately known as the blueberry muffin baby because um, the child will have, like, you know, a large abdomen, so that's the muffin top, and these spots can be blue. So they produce catecholamines, and there's elevated urine levels of van vanillo mandelic acid and homovanillic acid, just like pheochromocytoma. So with that, is, you also have to treat it just like pheochromocytoma. Okay, so a nephroblastoma is going to be uh, a tumor of the nephrons and kidneys. They're going to be a risk of developing Wilms tumor. So it's also known as Wagger syndrome. So Wilms syndrome, aniridia, um, genitourinary genito problems, and mental retardation. The Dennis Drash is another syndrome where there's gonadodysgenesis and early onset nephropathy. Beck with Weiderman um, is going to present with organomegaly, macroglossus, so a large mouth, omphalocele, so there's going to be a, like a herniation, uh, it's like a growth of just um, spinal fluid. It, remember, it's just like that bump outwards. And adrenocytomegaly. It's also going to present with the large abdominal masses and blood in the urine. Okay, clipophil is going to be autosomal recessive, and it's just a short neck due to the fusion of cervical vertebra. That's due to the failure of normal segmentation of the cervical somites. The triad is low posterior hairline, short neck, limited neck, uh, neck range of motion thanks to the short neck. Associated with deafness, cleft palate, torticollis, thanks to the neck, and webbed fingers. Treacher Collins syndrome is an autosomal dominant mutation in TCOF1 genes and a bunch of other ones. It's also known as the mandibulofacial dysostosis. There's hearing loss, um, visual impairment, cleft palate, macrostomia, thanks to the um, like deformation of the mandible and the face. Uh, there's heart defects, GI malformation are also really commonly associated with it. Um, unfortunately, these uh, children, well, I don't know if it's unfortunate or not, but they are born uh, with normal intellectual uh, development. Um, their IQ is normal. So that's it for now. Thank you for your attention and good luck studying.